be doing a youth lecture on Imam Ali and me. Could we recite Brother Salih with a salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad? Respected guests, scholars, my dearest elders, my fellow sisters and brothers in Islam and in humanity, assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh, peace be upon you all. As Brother Ali mentioned, I've been given the topic title of Imam Ali alayhi salam to me. Who is this man to me? Who is the successor of the Holy Prophet to me? Who is this father of the masters of the youth of paradise to me? Who is this husband of Sayyidina Fatima, the master of the women of the world to me? What does this man symbolize? What does he show? What does he portray, illustrate? Now, when you're a young man or woman and you're growing up, for most of us, it started in the annex next door. You're at the age of five and you hear, Imam Ali was this, Imam Ali was this, Imam Ali was this. And you start to build up this picture of this incredible action figure. He's so incredible, you know, you have action man, Imam Ali is even higher. And you wouldn't even believe that this man is real from the sum of the stuff you start to hear. And then, of course, as you get to six, seven, eight, you start to realize he's not an action figure, you can't purchase him and he's a real person. And then you start to feel, well, why has this person got so many attributes attached to him? And then as you get to the age of 10, 11, 12, you start to realize about his life, why he needed these different attributes, why he had these different attributes, and how he illustrated these attributes to the entire Muslim Ummah until today of all humanity. And then as your age progresses, you start to realize, this is my leader. And you start to build a relationship with him. This relationship didn't start building from that age. It, was start build, it started to build from the moment you were five. From the moment that when you came out of your mother's womb, you heard Ashada and Ali and Wali Allah in either of your ears. And then you get the opportunity to arise when you get that email through saying you have the visa to go to Iraq, to go to Najaf, to now go and meet this incredible man. But what we, should, what we should not forget is that this man has come to us, he's in our majlises all the time. And we meet him on a regular basis. For we send our salutations to him, to his family over and over again, and he's constantly instilled within our hearts. So as this age progresses, and our mind starts to progress as well with our relationship with Imam Ali, we then realize that actually maybe I should use this person as a role model for myself as opposed to the likes of David Beckham. Maybe this is the man I should really be following. The way that I see it is that if you have a footballer as your role model, you know, they're taught to get the ball into the goal. Imam Ali salam, would say what? What's the point in sending something to your goal? You should be going to your goal yourself. Oh. Get to that goal. Get past that goal. How many times has he told us, and the Holy Prophet, how many times have they told us to ensure that we excel in the departments that we work in, that we try to become academics within? And in the Holy Quran, in Surah number 33, Ayah number 21, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that there has certainly been for you in the Messenger of Allah, and in an excellent pattern for anyone whose hope is in Allah and the last day and who remembers Allah often. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that use the likes of Rasulullah as a role model for yourself. Try and emulate him. And it goes without saying that from the amount that the Holy Prophet has said about Imam Ali السلام, that we can use him as well as our role model. We can use their family as a role model and this is what we need to do from today.
My role here right now is not to tell you about the ahadith, about the tafsir of Qur'an because we have scholars who are in the right position to do so. All I wish to do is to attain your attention, to try and ensure that if our role models are not in the likes of Ali ibn Abi Talib, then maybe it's time to start realizing that that's the way we should go. Because if we're on that straight and narrow path with this incredible man, there's no way we can go off into a wrong avenue. There's no way we can commit an act like that happened on Wednesday in South London. So now when we look for these attributes within a role model that we seek, what kind of attributes should they have? Immediately, what springs to mind? It should be a man of knowledge. It should be a man that had a purpose in life, a goal, a target, and a man that reached this target and went well beyond it. A man that's remembered till today, a man that's even on the famous Call of Duty game in the United, the United Offensive Pack, Expansion Pack, that when you died, not physically, but on the game, a quote of Imam Ali salam came up. This is the kind of areas that Imam Ali has gone to. Who would have thought? Many would have thought he may have just remained within the four walls of the masjid. But his message has gone so far, so wide, and if we as his Shi'i are sitting here and we don't even think about we have this role model and how we can use him into our best interest, we've done something really wrong, really wrong. So to continue on that frame of the kind of attributes that we look for, on my sheet I have the absolute basics, good morals, confidence, bravery, being heroic, Understanding, I've got a few more here, but I'm sure each of these words has now blistered a moment in history where you thought, Ya oh, Ali was brave and loving, he was strong in Khaybah, he was this there, he was this there. Each of these key areas, Imam Ali fulfills it and goes further. And this is the man that we should really be looking to. And when Alhamdulillah I got the opportunity to go to Najaf, to go and meet this incredible man, it's something like no other. Now, just looking around here, I see some of the guys that I travelled with. And just remembering that five hour coach journey from Baghdad to Najaf, despite everyone being a little bit tired and falling asleep, it got to a point where everyone was a bit excited, to say the least. You started to see the flags going past. You started to think, hold on one minute, this guy that I used to think was an action figure, I'm going to go see him now. What's going on? And you start to think that. Yes, I want to see him, but he's invited me too, and he wants to see me. Mola wants to see me? Really? What have I done? And then it's time to reflect back in London, what have I done? Is it enough? For me, most definitely no. There's thousands more miles that I need to do before I even get one step further. But as this journey went on and we got into the shrine of Imam Ali, السلام, for me, I felt as if there was a king in front of me. You see his golden dome just sticking down and I distinctly remember the moment where I turned around as I came out of the coach and a few of the guys were standing just to the side looking around the hotel and just stunned. Faze is silent. These are guys who don't stop chatting, trust me, they do not stop. And they were silent, bright red in the face. And then you walk around and you step to the side and you think, wow, it's not just a golden dome. It's not just high walls that show how incredible this man is. It's just his majesty in this city. It just reverberates through every person that passes through. And that's Imam Ali alayhi salam. And each step as you take forward, you start to think, wow, I'm getting that much closer. This is the man I've looked up to. I'm getting that much closer. I'm getting that much closer. And I tell you, the moment when you get there, your emotions are to yourself. But one thing that I found on a personal level was on the first two times that I visited, two consecutive days, I struggled to really get that emotional connection whereby I was boiling my tears out. I struggled to get there. And then upon reflection, when on the third day I managed to get to this stage, I thought back and I thought, why was Imam not letting me attach myself, fall onto him? Embrace him. Or maybe it's because I call myself the Shia of Ali, the follower of Ali. And yet back in London I'm a completely different person to when I am in front of the crowd. Maybe this was his way of him shaking his finger at me, telling me, What are you doing? 
yes, you may have done this, but what about all of this? But then on the third day, Imam Ali cannot hold back his mercy. He now sees you in the most humble of states that you've ever been because you're in the presence of such a man. And he embraces you. And he reminds you of the love that he can give. He gives you everything that he had. He gives you the best hospitality you can come across. He gives you every single thing that you could possibly desire. Just like that. Just because we follow him. Just because we revere him. Just because he's our role model. But what's important to take home is that we have a man who has quote after quote after quote if you type into Google. Who has mannerism after mannerism and so on and so on. And it's all well and good about us coming up on here and speaking about him, sitting behind the book, learning another hadith commentary from the Hawr al-Anwar. It's all great. But would Imam Ali alayhi salam, or did Imam Ali alayhi salam, I should say, just sit behind a book, just listen to the Prophet? Or did he go out and ensure that the things that he learned, he then went to try and rectify within society? And what you may think to be something so small in your action, with the current day of technology, can be multiplied within an instant. One tweet, one Facebook status can travel miles. And this is the opportunity we have today. And this is what Imam Ali salam, would expect from us, <coughs> by which he should be thinking this attack that happened on Wednesday. Every single one of us should show the Muslim world, should show humanity worldwide about what the true meaning of Islam is. That these people are not from the religion of Islam. They are from a completely different ideology. We have nothing to do with them. But do we go about it by going and insulting other people's faiths? Do we go about it by insulting other people's sex within the religion of Islam? What kind of akhlaq and behavior is this? Would Imam Ali salam, advocate this? Of course not. So we should be those people who greet people with smiles, who greet people with a firm handshake, and who welcome them into our homes and educate them in a subtle manner, who show them what we stand for and the kind of morals that we gain. And I would like to end by sharing with you two quotes that I found from Ali alayhi salam by which if you just type into Google, thousands will come up. And I think they'll stick in your minds hopefully and maybe give you something to ponder over. The first, contentment is the capital which will never diminish. Contentment is the capital which will never diminish. And the second is that there is enough light for one who wants to see. There is enough light for one who wants to see. And I end by thanking Stam Jafri for inviting me, by thanking you for all attending, and by asking you all to please grace this famous atmosphere with salat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Brother Sadiq for that incredibly personal and emotional account of what Imam Ali means to you. Jazakallah khair. I'm delighted that...